Today we're here in Sacramento, the capital of California. Today we meet with Senator Tom Berryhill, Assemblymember Kristen Olson, and Assemblymember Frank Bigelow. Please join us. Let's open with you, Senator Berryhill. Give us a little bit of background on your career, and then we'll move on. Yeah, I uh, actually I served four years in the assembly, and now and then I'm in. I've had one term here in the Senate, and uh, my current district it runs from Fresno Clovis uh, to Lodi. If I'm lucky enough to get reelected in the eighth Senate district, it will go from Death Valley clear to Rancho Cordova. Rancho Cordova. That's half the United States of America. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it feels like when you're driving through it. But, uh, but I very much, uh, I'm a wine grape grower by trade right. and uh, fourth generation wine grape grower. And my dad, of course, was Claire Berry Hill, who was in the Assembly Senate and was Director of Agriculture under George Dukmasian back in the day, in the good old days. Yes, wonderful man. Thank you. So it's God's country. It's a great district I really enjoy and have enjoyed. Uh, serve it. Good. Excellent. Thank you. Kristen, let's start with you next. Give us a little bit of your background. Sure. Well, my professional background is in marketing and communications. I'm married. I'm a mom of three beautiful children, and that's my favorite role. But it's been such an honor to serve here in the State Assembly for about three years now. I currently represent Stanislaus and San Joaquin counties, and in the first two years, I represented our beautiful motherload country. Yeah. And I uh, still enjoy visiting up there and doing everything I can to be an advocate for our rural communities. Thank you. Appreciate that. Wow, that, now it's my turn. Rancher, <laughs> businessman, gosh, the list goes on of everything I seem to do. But, you know, I'm just a guy who was blessed enough to be able to put back into the community by starting off as a county supervisor and now here I am in the state assembly finishing up the uh, first term so I'm looking forward to representing the people throughout assembly district 5 right. not only uh, for the future many uh, years but you know what in every way I can I, I just enjoy it and by the way two counties I, I, I feel the pain over here with, with Tom because <laughs> going from the San Joaquin River on the low side, if you will, in the middle of the state of California, all the way to the center of the beautiful Lake Tahoe with nine counties. Yeah, it's, it's fun. I feel for them. I went from six <laughs> counties down to two, and I can tell you I do a lot less driving these days. <laughs> but, something in Bigelow, you don't ride your horse up and down this whole valley region, do you? I, I really don't. Was that your horse out there in front of us? I don't. I, I, I okay. drive a nice little vehicle that gets me around with as best a, uh, economical costs as possible. Excellent. Well, thank you, that's very good. Well, let's just start off with what I have is what can be done to unify the Republican Party here in California? And we'll start, and then we just kind of have an open back and forth. Yeah. Well, for starters, I think we are unified. I think if you, if you watch what has happened over the last couple election cycles, we elected uh, Canella, Anthony Canella, with a 20, he had a 20 point Democrat uh, lead that he had to overcome. Uh, Andy Videk recently uh, picked up Andy. Uh, so we, we picked up three, just uh, and the mayor of San Diego just, yes, just a couple weeks ago. So, I mean, you can say that there's still some, some work that has to be done, but I'd say overall that we've done a pretty good job. And again, it's about communication. It's about the CRP. It's about the local central committees and communication. Thank you, exactly. I agree with the Senator. I mean, we're, we have great momentum in our favor right now between mm -hmm. the VIDAC victory and the San Diego mayor. We're excited that yeah. if we're strategic and unified, we can really start to change things around in California. When it comes to unity, you know, we still have to work toward that, not only statewide, but nationally. Exactly. And what we need are leaders in our communities and in our elected positions that can unify all Republicans, yes. all groups of Republicans, all geographies, and bring us together. And I believe that we are on the cusp of doing that. 
and that that's what's really going to bring common sense policies back to California and will allow us to start winning seats again. And we showed in that mayor's race, we had no business winning that race. Yes. Um, everything, all the odds were against us, and we won. So well, public opinion is changing. And President Obama even was there, I suppose, or gave his endorsement to that. Plus, look at the situation that was you know, left behind him, so that he's got quite a term to finish, plus the negative opinions of people in San Diego about politics in general. Absolutely. But what a huge victory, and that was on Valentine's Day, according to what I had. Frank, you want to add to that? Gosh, there's very little you can add to it, I know. except she maybe said you, might, well, she? You, you might be able to also sum it up with the fact that with the historic change of guard here at this, on the floor of the State Assembly, you have a, a large number of new members that came in. Yes. But at the same time, we saw something that wasn't occurring that did happen. We saw the change in the leadership at the CRP, the California Republican Party. Mm -hmm. uh, former Senator, State Senator Jim Brulte came in. Yes. He's taken the lead. He's grabbed a hold of the reins and he showed strong leadership. He's been able to help move uh, a lot of positive uh, energy uh, throughout the party already and when you tie that together with the leadership from Connie Conway and uh, assembly member uh, minority leader and the, and the Senate minority leader uh, Mr. Huff we've seen a common thread where they're tied together now okay. and that strong leadership will help us in this next election cycle and we've already seen it uh, firsthand. Sure. You know, Carl, Carl yeah, just, just to add, add to that, I think the other thing that we are doing much better and as we move forward with a game plan, it's creating a good bench. Yeah. I, think, I, I don't think we've done a very good job at that over the last 20 years. And with, again, with, with Jim at, at the helm now, uh, we are seeing the expansion of the Republican Party, which I think will bode well coming into this next uh, election cycle. Which leads me to my next point. Can you update us a little bit on each of your views regarding our number one issue, and that's water? You know, Senator, you made a wonderful comment just yesterday on the radio in, in the Valley, basically saying, look, if President Obama really is concerned, he should do such and such. Could you elaborate a little bit more well, on sure. that? Sure. You know, I was part of the, uh, the original 2009 water bond that, uh, that Dave Cogdell started. We worked 10 years. Ten years. Ten years to get, I mean, water rights, huge, continuous appropriation, to build storage once, once that bond was passed, yeah. took years to get there. Uh, this drought that we are currently in, it's a two-edged sword. Uh, my guys down in, in Fresno, no matter what happens, are, aren't going to have water allocation this year. And so the dry weather right now forces people's hand, certainly potentially uh, forces the governor's hand. And I think that uh, it has to be a bipartisan deal, but uh, if it stays dry, you could see um, some major legislation come out and a new bond come out that has all the policy that we had in 2009. I think it'd be a good thing. Sure. And you just recently had a phenomenal interaction right here in, this, in the Capitol with Mrs. Moon, I believe, King Moon, mm -hmm. Mrs. King Moon. Could you just elaborate a little bit for those that have not seen that clip? Just what that, set that up a bit. Say, certainly, Just certainly. kind of bring us up and to where it was. And maybe I'll start with an illustration of how desperate the situation is. You know, this weekend we took the kids, intended to take the kids on a snow trip, just to play in the snow. Sure. Went up to Tuolumne County, got all the way to the Sonora Pass, no snow. Yes. I haven't seen it like that in all my 40 years. I mean, yeah. we are in a desperate position in the state of California. And what we really have to focus on, as Senator Berryhill said, is building more water storage capacity. Absolutely. So in these terrible dry years, right. we have captured water in the wet years previously to provide for families, to provide for farmers. And instead, what we're seeing is signs up all over the place, even in places like Tuolumne County, where our water originates, yes. saying, don't use water, conserve water, don't water your lawns, it's terrible. And so my, my disappointment and the way I was engaging Ms. Moon in a hearing that we had last week is that this administration, Governor Brown's administration, is so focused on tunnels yes. to convey water to Southern California that we don't have in the first place that it just makes a mockery of the situation that we're in today. It's like bridge, you know, building a bridge to nowhere. That's exactly right. What we really need is to build storage capacity above the delta, below the delta, above ground and below ground if we're really going to solve California's long-term water challenges. 
And so what I was challenging Ms. Moon on is number one, she didn't seem to be adequately prepared for the hearing and knowing all the ins and outs of water, which she's the chief deputy director of the Department of Water Resources. You better learn your stuff and get up to speed, right? But beyond that is they keep indicating that nothing in the tunnels proposal will touch pre-1914 water rights which areas in the motherload country enjoy. But the problem is, if they're going to take more water from the north to the south in order to meet understandable needs, then they're gonna have to touch those pre-1914 rights. So what we really need to focus on in order to unite Northern California and Southern California, east and west, is storage Absolutely. so that we have ample water to supply to all of our communities and find win-win solutions for the state. Absolutely, well said. Frank, you want to add to that? Where do you see a bill coming? Can we do anything to improve our relationships on the federal level? Jeff, I know that's a big question, but we're, what's the map to get us to the, what we need to the do? The map is to get the state on board to begin with. Okay. Once we get the state aligned on a, on a bond measure, then we can tag that along with the federal government and bring the federal funding along that we'll need. But it's also going to have to bring in our partners at the local level who are going to be additionally assisting and help fund that component of success by having storage facilities that uh, Kristen is talking about. You know, when the senator was talking about the 2009, a lot of local government officials, myself included in that, were working diligently behind the scenes try to, trying to make sure that those policies were sound and they were in place so that in the future uh, people wouldn't be compromised on their water rights. And that's one thing that we want to make sure that as we move forward from here on, we're not treading on people's private property and water rights. Unfortunately, we're hearing more discussion about taking away water rights, once again, on the surface here at this Capitol. Mm -hmm. That doesn't show good, strong unity in order to build a, a trifecta winning solution, which is state, local, and federal working together in a successful way to have water storage. But unless we have above and below and above and below ground water storage, yes. there won't be much success and there won't be any uh, uh, excess water for us to utilize that we're going to need in the future. Go take a look right now. Any lake you want to go to, except for those that are in Southern California, they're empty. Yes. It doesn't take much to see from the sky how desperate times are. Just like Kristen talked about, the snow, it doesn't exist unless you get to the highest elevations above 9,000 feet right now. That's not much. We're looking, they say 27%, but it's really far less than that. Uh, in reality for what we can use because we lose so much in, in tra uh, transvaporation on the boughs of the trees because we have such a density of trees at the higher elevation that we lose that in that evaporation component. So it really won't see water transferring into our lakes. So we've got, we've got to do much better uh, right now at building surface storage so that we can capture that water so that we can use it and putting it underground into the future. Again, I can get into the weeds on this, but yeah. I don't want to get and take up too much of your time. No. You know, I'm excited well, about the opportunity, though, the three of us have as representing you. adjacent communities because we can be leaders in this debate. Please. You know, as yes. Assemblyman Bigelow mentioned, I was on the Modesto City Council. Uh, Frank was on the Madera County Board of Supervisors when Senator Berryhill and Senator Cogdill were leads on bringing that first water bond proposal together that could have really helped us with our situation now. Today, Assemblyman Bigelow is the chair, uh, or the vice chair of the Assembly Water Committee, and so we're positioned to really play key roles in this that will protect our valley and foothill communities while at the same time providing reliable solutions for our whole state. Sure. And you know, I think Frank makes a good point in that we, we need to be the lead. We, we, need to sh we need to show the feds that we can do a bipartisan deal that makes sense. Yes. But I think at that point in time, I think the Diane Feinsteins and Barbara Boxers even, uh, and our local representatives back in, in uh, Washington, D.C., when they talked about raising Shasta as, a, as, a, as an addition to, mm -hmm. to more water storage, mm -hmm. would, it would go a long way in helping uh, you know, a population that, that they claim is going to be, well, it's 40 million a day, and we only have uh, infrastructure for 18. So not to do this is absolutely insane. And uh, we've got an opportunity now. We need to move forward. Senator Barry Hill, give us a kind of a synopsis real quickly of what, what you think our discussion's been today. And then we'll just well, go to Kirsten and, and back to I can tell you that uh, for me, these are the most exciting times. And we've been through some tough ones in the, <laughs> in the last eight years. 
But uh, with uh, the current situation with Obamacare and things that are going on federally and historically, this should be a huge uh, midterm election for us. And I am very excited about being part of the leadership team that's going to gain seats. And in all likelihood, not only are we going to get back in the Senate our two seats that we need, I think the Assembly gets back their two seats. And I think it's very important that we get back to the negotiating table because what's happening right now is that we can't protect those, the, our rural counties, Tuolumne County, we can't protect them. Uh, with, but with, at that bargaining table, you know, talking with the governor, we can protect these rural counties and it's really important, really exciting times right now. Thank you. Appreciate your leadership. Kirsten, would like to add to the Senator's comments? Sure. Well, thank you, first of all, for the opportunity for all of us to come and visit with you together. You. We really enjoy working together and representing, we can the, tell. Yeah, <laughs> in representing the Central Valley and our foothill and rural and Sierra Nevada communities. We believe we have the most beautiful part of all of California. Yes, we and do. it's been such an honor to represent it. But this year, we have a lot of hard work ahead of us. Yes. While it's true, as Governor Brown would say, we're in a much better position with the state budget than we were, we are in no way out of the woods, as he would like to suggest. Yes. The fact is, we still have 24% poverty levels, anywhere between 12 and 17% unemployment in our Central Valley communities. We have a long way to go to bring economic prosperity, jobs, quality schools back to our communities, water in order to provide for job growth. And so those are the issues that I'm really going to be focused on this year. Jobs and education continue to be a very high priority to me. And part and parcel to all of those issues this year is water, as we discussed. Absolutely. So look forward to continuing to engage with you, um, with all the residents throughout our communities and through your viewership, to do what we can to make sure that our communities have a voice in the halls of Sacramento. And I'm hopeful through those efforts and through our election efforts that we have great momentum going into the 2014 cycle that we can begin to see California turn around and become the golden state once again that used to be the envy not only of this nation but of the world. I think our best days lies ahead, lie ahead of us if we continue to work with precision focus toward those goals. Excellent. Well said. Wow. Exactly. Just love. Here we go just, again. I just, that's why we have the rose between us. You know? she, she, she is so good, so articulate. And, and when you see her on the floor, it's just inspiring. You know, I do want to say the same thing, though. I want to say thank you to bringing this uh, opportunity for us to reach out to the communities that we represent yes. and to, to let them see us, to have a voice that uh, they're probably not exposed to uh, for many of those folks. But thank you for doing this and reaching out, Carl. We really do it. And all, all of your team here for taking the time, especially the mic guy who's got to manually hold that boom up there so you can hear us, folks. But really, my, my, the, the time that I've been here hasn't changed a bit for me, for my focus. Getting jobs, getting a vibrant community going, once again, is so important. There's tens of thousands of people out of work just in, in Assembly District 5 right now. I don't know how many in yours. Again, tens of thousands. In each district, I can tell you, because we all represent about the same number, and it's about the same population basis that fit into those uh, stats. And it's sad. It's sad because we have rural communities who once were vibrant. They were the source of all good things in this state. And now that's changed. So we've got to, once again, step back up to the plate and figure out why that is. And clearly, regulations, over-regulation, overreach of this state's government which is causing and hampering our vibrant economy from going. Second, we've got to, to instill that, we've got to open the doors to getting some more uh, uh, water in the communities so that we can help open those uh, channels of, of agriculture again that once were so vibrant. When you think about the Central Valley where portions of Tom's in my district are, we're looking at 200 plus thousand acres fallowed. That may actually double right now. That's going to go into the hundreds of thousands of jobs lost and are gonna be impacted, it's serious. Again, jobs, jobs, and jobs. Regulations have to be reduced. We have to have people who are willing to give so that the state can survive and, and move forward, as Kristen so appropriately put with her eloquence. So, thank you again. You're welcome. And Carl, just as a finishing note, yes. you know, in the Mendota area, West, West Fresno, they're talking about 50 to 60% unemployment. 
And so th those kind of numbers are absolutely devastating. Water means jobs. Yes. And uh, for, for me, that's the highest priority that we've got. And again, we all look forward to working with you and through you uh, this next year and to get something done. Well, thank you for your time. We're glad you're, you're with us. We appreciate your leadership and more importantly, the unity. I mean, if, you, if we can keep this going, we're gonna win mm -hmm. and we need that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Carl Dambacker reporting for Gold Rush News from the Capitol. I hope you've learned something today.